In today's episode, we are joined by the 46th mayor of the city of Barrie, the Honorable Jeff Lehman. Join us as we touch on the exciting upcoming projects that are in the city, social housing issues, including affordable housing, and what living in the city of Barrie means to Jeff. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this episode. I have an absolutely amazing guest joining us today. We have the Honorable Jeff Lehman, who is the 46th mayor of the city of Barrie. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Thank you for having me on. (laughs) No, this is awesome. We're really looking forward to um, this conversation. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to come on board and chat with us. One of the questions that I have, how do you become mayor? (laughs) <laughs> Can we just it's, dive right into this it's, one? <laughs> it's punishment for shoplifting, actually. So you you serve a sentence. Um, so, well, you, I mean, it, <laughs> that's funny. Um, you get elected, uh, obviously, and, and getting elected um, in Barrie over the years has become increasingly complex, as it should, because the city's grown. So um, it used to be, I think, for, for decades that Barrie City Council you know, people would serve and naturally there would be some people who, who became leaders on those councils and were reelected yeah. and, and then decided to run for mayor. That pattern really changed about 20 years ago. And I think, um, you know, we had a period of time where there were five mayors in, in um, uh, 10 years. I remember uh, and, that, yeah. Yeah, through the first, uh, the first decade of, of, uh, of this century. Um, and I've been fortunate enough now to be mayor for a few years um, and to get reelected. And I think, you know, those elections are usually the, you know, one of the challenges is the turnout is very low. So if you want to become mayor, um, you really need to give people a reason why they should go out and vote. And um, I think one of the positive things uh, around a municipal election is because there's, there's no partisanship, there's no political parties. It really is about your ability to speak to what you believe in for the city, but it's also very personal. I mean, people get a sense of you as a person, often in the first few seconds that you meet them at the door, and you do as many job interviews as you can by knocking doors, and and hopefully people like your ideas for the city and, and think you're the right person. That's awesome. It kind of sounds like being a realtor a little bit. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> a lot of knocking door doors these days. Yes, <laughs> especially these days, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is this something that you've always, like, let's backpedal a little bit. How did you get involved in politics? Is this something that you've always had an interest in or yeah. what led you down this road? So when I was a teenager and then when I was at university, I was active in federal politics. I was just as a volunteer, but I've yeah. been to... Uh, uh, leadership conventions for uh, political parties, part of that part of the process, volunteered on elections, those sorts of things. But my dad is an urban planner and uh, my mom and my dad built their business together. So my dad worked with municipalities all across Ontario his whole career. Wow. And and so, and I worked in the family business for a little while. So I started being familiar with municipalities really early in life, like teenager uh, working over the summer. You know, I would do That's sort awesome. of research work and background work for some of the projects he was he was working on and surveys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so fast forward, I, I went to the LSE, uh, did my grad degree, and, and that was in the cities program. So that was on how economic forces shape cities. And then I became a consultant. And I spent 10 years building a small consulting firm that also worked with cities across Canada. So I guess um, municipalities and cities has been kind of in my blood and in my background most yeah. of my life. Um, but I didn't really set out to be mayor. I, I uh, ran for council in 2006 because I thought I had some ideas that could help, particularly with the core area of Barry Ward Two, which was where I ran, and I was successful. Yeah. And then, and then I thought Barry was ready for for a change and maybe some some different approaches, more ambitious approaches to um, to running the city. Uh, so I ran for mayor in 2010. But I'd worked with cities between the family business, my own business, and academia really most of my life. That's amazing. Yeah, I guess it really is sort of entrenched in you. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky with my dad when we were growing up, I would go on these trips with him to these little small towns in northern Ontario, um, former mining towns or forestry towns. And a lot of time there, they were sort of struggling with what their future was because, you know, the mine was closing down or forestry was backing off. and, And those led to really fundamental questions around how do you keep it town healthy and how do you build an economic future yeah. for a, a, even a small town or a small city and so I, I think some of that 
um, I really like that work aside from, you know, going on road trips with my dad, which I also <laughs> really like. That's awesome. But that, yeah, it, it started early, I guess. So with all of that, then I guess that kind of leads to with, well, it's nice that you have all that background and the experience with that side of it for sort of creating the vision with all the other counselors and everybody for what is going to end up happening with the city of Barrie. So sure. it's been all the urbanization and the revitalization of downtown. It's been great to see everything that's been going on. So it'll be nice to see where all of that sort of goes. Um, is there, so with projects in the city, what are some of the ones that you're most excited about that are coming up? Yeah. So private sector, I think what I'm most excited about is the obvious investment that's coming into the core now in the form of, uh, of high rise development. And I think the reason I'm excited about that, I know some of those projects are controversial because they're on a bigger scale than anything yeah. we've seen before. Um, but the number, uh, you know, by bringing thousands more people into living in the downtown, uh, we are going to strengthen it immeasurably because these are people who are there in some cases 24 seven, especially now with remote work. I think a lot of people are gonna be living and working in the downtown, but even those who commute, who might take the GO train or, or work somewhere else in Barrie or whatever it is, you know, having a resident population in your core uh, that is three times greater than who's, what's there today, that is gonna be so great for our economy, our, our shops, our services, our restaurants, those sorts of things. And I really want that to be part of a strong recovery from COVID. So on the private sector side, that's very exciting. I think the, the new communities in the South End are exciting too, because they're on a very different model than what's been built for the past 30 or 40 years in Barrie. They're much broader range of housing types. Um, product for the real estate uh, industry, I think is gonna be widely different. Um, and they're also on a, they're gonna look and feel different when you walk and walk around them and drive around them. On the public sector side, um, um, we're talking about this right now because I think there's a lot of relatively small projects that are going to be pretty exciting in the next in the next little while. We have a, a library coming in Holly this year in the southwest of the city, a brand new branch library. Awesome. Um, we are going to we're going to build a new bus building at the Allendale GO station, which is actually quite a beautiful little design. But what that does as well is it allows the downtown transit terminal once the buses move over to the GO station. The transit terminal can be repurposed and i'm excited about that project for years we've been talking about it uh to make it into a food market similar it to is. the byword market yeah i'm so excited for that yeah that, that could is, be i think it can really yeah. be an anchor for the west end of downtown in terms of something that brings people not just from outside the city i mean i think it'll be a tourist attraction but people from the south end of the city is a, it's a really great reason to come downtown to visit the market right for sure well, that was even yesterday. I was with my boys and we were driving around and I said, we should have gone down to the farmer's market to go see what was going on. But just wandering and bringing that local feel and supporting all the local businesses and allowing a space for everybody to sell whatever their products are and do all that. I think it's going to be really neat having that. Um, what about the just going up where I know you were heavily involved with the Prince of Wales and Central mm. um, property. What are the plans or what's happening over there? Yeah, I know that's one. so it's been through some twists and turns. I mean, the one piece that that has gone exactly as I think it was planned was that there's a, a developer out of Kitchener called Hip Developments who purchased um, uh, the Barry Central site from the school board. And mm -hmm. then the city did a land deal with them because we owned the playing field. Uh, and if you looked at a site plan of that property, it made no sense at all. You had the high school piece, but then the football field was owned by yeah. the city and it was gonna be what, a park um, maybe. But yeah. we, we sort of looked at it all and said, okay, you trade us the Fisher Auditorium piece along Dunlop and we'll, we'll give you the field. Yeah. Uh, which made a much much um, a better development site. So HIP is proceeding. They're uh, they're very excited to get into the ground. That's two 20 story uh, purpose built rental buildings and a 10 story. Uh, one one might be condo, uh, but I believe two are rental, and that's badly needed rental supply. Definitely. There's also the brand new YMCA, and if the federal and provincial funding comes through for that, that will happen on the corner of uh, of Simcoe and Bradford. Uh, and that'll be very, very exciting, I think, for the downtown because it's a, a fitness facility, but it's a lot more than that. It's a community, it's a true community center. 
Then the city owned land, um, you know, we, we actually asked HIP not to knock down Fisher Auditorium because we thought we might be able to renovate that into a performing arts center. And when the reports came back, ultimately that was gonna be extremely expensive and probably we would be better served on a bunch of levels to just build new. Yeah. So that is the current plan. And we're, we're working, I've just formed a performing arts center task force because we want by the end of 2021 to have the plan uh, ready for what that new facility will look like. It may be right where Fisher was. It actually may be uh, on another part of the site. It could even be in a different part of the downtown and we'll have a development opportunity there. Yeah. But um, we do feel that that's really important. Any city needs a decent performing arts uh, facility for everybody from theater to the, you know, Huronia Symphony Orchestra and the Berry Film Festival who are yeah. amazing. And we really want them to be a big part of downtown. Yes, no, that's, I'm loving everything. It'll, it'll be nice to have some life back, well, more life back down in the downtown core there. Um, so for, you touched a little bit on the rental side and affordable housing. We know as realtors, we deal with this on a constant basis with everybody that's trying to get into the housing market, people that are trying to um, even just secure rentals. There's such a shortage out there now. What can you touch on for affordable housing and what other incentives? Is there anything coming down the pipes that the city's trying to work on, whether it's with provincial government or federal government, or is there anything happening there? Yeah, great question. There's so much happening there that uh, we're talking about task forces a lot today. That, that was the second of three task forces that I've actually formed because there's a number of different sort of projects going on. And one of the challenges on the, on the public side of affordable housing is all four levels of government are involved. So in Barrie, that's the city, the county of Simcoe, who are the uh, social service provider, the province and the feds. And so you can get, you know, different levels doing different projects, all good things, but we sort of need to pull that all together into, a, into an action, uh, action plan. Um, on the private side, what we, the problem we've got in Barrie is that it, we really haven't had purpose-built rental for decades. And some of that was because of the economics that um, the, the rents here didn't, uh, wouldn't support the construction of concrete uh, purpose-built rental buildings. It was just too expensive. Yeah. That has changed to some extent, um, but you've also got now pension funds and, and other so-called patient money that are interested in owning, investing in and owning um, yeah. purpose-built rentals. So we need a lot of that. And, and that's why some of those buildings in the downtown were very excited because that's exactly what they are. They're uh, purpose-built rentals backed by pension funds. And in some cases, even the condo buildings will allow the units to be rented. So you end up with a lot of rentals. That will eventually bring down the rents in Barrie, but the, the urgent need is really around homelessness. And that is the, the solution there is supportive housing. That's mm -hmm. building, um, uh, things like Lucy's Place, which is the former Bars Motel on Essa Road, which was converted into units, residential units. But the critical thing there was the addictions, mental health, employment services were brought on site so that the people who are there in deepest housing need, often with intersecting challenges that are keeping them on the street, yeah. uh, are able to get the services they need to help them. So we need a strategy that, that sort of helps the hardest, the hardest to house, the people in the greatest need, and that's probably a few hundred people in Barrie, but then there's thousands that are struggling with the cost of rentals. And the only way you bring rent down in a market the size of Barrie is you need a lot of new units to come on stream. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're really targeting and, and hoping to see. I mean, we can't, we can't require a unit to be a condo versus a rental, but we can certainly encourage the kind of conditions that allow rental to get constructed. So we do have a series of financial incentives there. That's fabulous. So I guess the, from the incentive standpoint, then there are other incentives other than just what's available with the county. That's yeah. Good. So, good. yeah, what we do is uh, we have a sliding scale for affordable housing discounts on uh, development charges, which basically okay. if you're an emergency shelter, you don't pay any DCs at all. Uh, if you're market affordable, it's called. Yeah. So, you know, like a little below average rent, but not deep, deep housing need or part of the shelter system, it's 25%. But, and in between there are different levels, transitional housing and so forth. Yeah. The other thing we have literally coming to planning committee um, uh, right now is uh, a proposal to waive all the fees. So wow. building permits, planning application, everything. And, and that's a, a much bolder step than we've taken before because the city will essentially take on those costs. 
but they are internal costs and we can manage that within what we call our enterprise model for building and planning services because it's so important for the yeah, city. That's great. No, it's, it's great to hear that there is some sort of hope and that there's plans that are getting put in place and that you've struck up the task force to try and help create a solution. Because I know yeah. it's there's so many different levels to it, even whenever you start touching on the social issues and everything there. So. Sure. Well, the, the key problem, though, is a market problem. It's supply and demand. And the problem is very, uh, if you look at our numbers relative to other medium-sized cities in, in Ontario or in Canada, we have among the lowest percentage of rental in our overall mix of, of dwellings. So we have the highest rate of ownership of almost any city in the country. You know, that's good on one level because that means a lot of people have equity uh, in their properties and that can help with, you know, generational stability and, and that sort of thing in terms of, 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 of basic wealth. But mm -hmm. it, it just right now, it means so many people are priced right out of the market. And, um, you yeah. know, with the rise of, of uh, purchase prices, the dramatic rise in purchase prices, that's also, you know, uh, creeping into the rental market with, uh, with rental rates going up so much. Is there going to be, just touching on the development charges, is there going to be, in order to sort of create more supply as well, I know we've got a ton going on with all the secondary plans and all the development that's happening out there, but is there um, any look to um, sort of reducing more of the red tape and trying to reduce development charges or provide incentives on that side, just for regular development? Um, well, I would say reducing reducing red tape, yes. I think the DC exemptions we've got for affordable housing uh, or reductions, uh, probably we wouldn't go a lot deeper on on DCs beyond that. And the reason for that is, um, you know, if we don't capture the cost of the new infrastructure, then the taxpayer has to pay it, and that ends up ending up affecting people. Well, it's a transfer to existing yeah. homeowners of the cost of growth, but it's also it does end up driving up the cost of rentals anyway, because if somebody is including prop there, you know, they have to recoup the property tax in the rent that they charge their tenant. So, so you really pay one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, so it's a bit about who pays. I mean, I think my own view on this is um, we should use DCs um, to incent kinds of development that we, we really need yeah. where the DC reduction will make a difference Absolutely. where the DC reduction doesn't really make a difference in the pro forma it's not as important. So for example, for 10 years, I've argued in favor of uh, industrial development charge discounts because the DCs on industrial were, were making new industrial development extremely expensive in Barrie, especially relative to our peers. And we were competing. So yeah. we did that for years and years and years. And now rents are rising and the, the economics are getting better. The yeah. same thing plays out in the uh, residential market. I believe in DC discounts for affordable housing. Yeah. I'm not sure I believe in them for market housing. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and then with industrial too, you've got the creation of jobs and other opportunities there too. So I guess it comes full circle with it. Whenever it you... does. Yeah. Um, what are, so I know we, at the board office, we deal a lot with um, supporting local and trying to help out local businesses as much as we yeah. possibly can. We know everybody's been impacted very heavily over the last year with COVID. Um, is there anything that the city is doing um, to try and help them out? Or what's your advice for small business owners or what can the local community do to help out there? Yeah, well, so from on day three of the pandemic in March uh, 16th, I think it was, I formed what was called the Economic Support Task Force. So I called together the heads of all the industry associations, including um, a BDAR, uh, I think at the second meeting. Uh, and we, we, we pulled everybody together to say, okay, we're, this is unprecedented. It's gonna heavily damage the economy. Um, we're gonna have to work together to support Barry businesses. And it was interesting because, you know, at the outset, you didn't, we didn't really understand the way it would play out in the economy, but we did after a month or two, because it became very apparent certain sectors were gonna get hit the hardest, anything tourism related, you know, hospitality, food and accommodation, arts and culture, we're going to get hammered. Uh, other sectors were eh, probably going to be okay. And as it's proven out, uh, construction has boomed in yeah. part because of the strength of the real estate market. Uh, manufacturing has largely been unaffected. They've had to change their processes. They've had some costs, but in Barrie, they've pretty much all been able to continue. And although there were disruptions with U.S. trade and global trade, they've still 
stayed relatively strong. So we focused our efforts over the last 12 months really on um, the sectors that have been hardest hit. And what I would say to people generally is support local when it comes to um, uh, small shops, uh, restaurants particularly, and uh, personal service businesses because they've been hit really hard. So, you know, what that means is uh, buy takeout, pick it up, you know, uh, you know, buy from your local restaurant, keep, keep it because a lot of, you know, if you're not going out, people who used to spend a lot of money in restaurants aren't spending that anymore. And that's what's actually hurting them. So you can still spend it through takeout, you know, go out once a week. Uh, if you if you are able, lots of people aren't able to afford that. But if you are able to get takeout from your local restaurant uh, and with personal services, a lot of what we focused on has been trying to uh, help them access grants and then um, to, to sort of survive, whether it's the wage subsidy or the Ontario Small Business Grant or otherwise. All this stuff is on our website. We have had a COVID-19 page for business from about a week in a year ago. Uh, and we continue to update as we roll out new grants or the feds roll out new grants and, and we try and connect them. But it's been a real collective effort. I mean, the chamber has been amazing on this. The Sandbox, our downtown entrepreneurial center, yeah. the city's own staff and Investberry have been calling businesses saying, have you applied? Can we help you apply? Yeah. That's great to see. I know even with just the latest push, whenever we went back into gray zone and just even your support and how what that meant for all those small businesses. And stepping yeah. up and voicing that was yeah it's been well, and it's yeah it's a work in progress i mean the re the uh, province adjusted the restaurant restrictions which i think was important because they didn't make a lot of sense you know you had this hard cap of 10 people that didn't matter whether you were uh, five thousand square feet or or, or yeah. 100 right yeah um but i they haven't yet adjusted the restrictions around you know i'll give you a quick example a photographer yeah. so photographers bring people into a studio that's one-on-one -on -one. You're shooting somebody from 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. Where's the public health risk? There is, you know, there's no evidence after 12 months of photography studios causing a spread of COVID-19. And if yeah. they can operate safely, why are we saying that it's okay to have, you know, a big box uh, store selling TVs and not, and not Absolutely. this? So, so uh, you know, you got to follow the science. We and and there's public health data now that gives us the benefit of 12 months of experience and where something is not a risk, it should be allowed to open. And that was the, that was the point I'd made at that time. And I think a lot of people still believe we need to, we need to make. No, that's great. So thank you for stepping up with all that. Um, Bidar, we love helping the city of Barrie. We love supporting the city. We are, all of our members are so entrenched. Um, we, what else can we do as an association to either further the partnership with the city and become more involved or what can be done there? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because we've partnered with BDAR in a few things and, and actually the affordable housing file, I mean, it, it, it's the one that makes the most sense because it's your area of, of expertise. I mean, nobody knows better the cost and price of, of housing than a realtor. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the things we engaged with with um, the organization about was uh, to to understand what the barriers were for homeowners who might want to do second suites, because second suites was one of our early sort of quick wins in terms of creating more rental supply. Not all of those are affordable. Some people create these incredible second suites that are two grand a month. But yeah. other people, you know, will take a, a basement apartment and it's 900 bucks. And that's actually a really great housing option for a senior living alone or a student or something like that. So, so that's something we want to continue to encourage is, is that uh, investor generated second suites. Um, and, and I think, there, you know, realtors, um, because of your contact with your clients, are in a position to actually encourage people to look at the incentive programs that have been created to do that. And that organically creates affordable housing in existing communities. Um, but another, I, you know, I think more broadly, you know, BDAR is involved in so many incredible activities and charitable activities and so forth. And I think some of our charities, um, you know, like the, the support for the Berry Food Bank during COVID was unbelievable. Uh, we've had a number of charities that have, have had really tremendous support. And, and I think going forward, um, some of them are gonna, need, are gonna need more and there's some that, yeah. that, that do need more. Um, and, and I think, you know, anybody who's undertaking themselves affordable housing builds are a natural partner for BDAR. So, 
you know, Salvation Army is trying to build a family oriented transitional housing project right now, trying to get their capital campaign done. The YMCA, who uh, have a big capital campaign to do that downtown facility, and they have a whole range of services that are going to help people in our, our community. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think those are ways that, that we can all get behind great projects in our city. That's awesome. Um, let's go a little bit more on the personal side. Uh, sure. What is it that you love about the city you're are you born and raised here then or yeah no, i wasn't born here i was born in toronto but my uh, parents moved us here when i was three years old uh, in 1970 yeah so, <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> a little while ago uh so I, yeah, I grew up in allendale heights i mean uh, honestly something I've, I've developed an appreciation i mean there's so many things that i love about the city i, I and uh, you know there's moments right there's moments where you just think you look around and go there's pure magic. Yeah. There's pure magic in the city. I remember standing in Heritage Park one day. I had an office downtown before I was mayor, and I'd worked in the office, and I could hear things going on on, on the street on Dunlop and on the waterfront. It was a summer day, and I walked down, and the classic car show was on, and there were thousands of people walking Wednesday. around the bay. <laughs> oh, it's just <laughs> all of it, and and there was, you know, music and food and all that kind of stuff, and I thought, you know this that we are we really have a tremendous amount of of life and energy in the city and it, i mean the thing that is there's so many things that are special about barry but among it is it seems to draw people who are very committed to it uh but are entrepreneurial about that i mean we have a very young population our average age is is uh, among the youngest in the country and that mm -hmm. translates to to just energy and entrepreneurialism in our dna and you can feel it sometimes i really believe that so I mean, uh, there's lots of physical things I could tell you about the neighborhoods I love, the waterfront. Um, I love my own neighborhood. I live in Old Allendale and and have always loved it. Um, but it, you're not supposed to pick among your children when you're mayor. So I, I love all neighborhoods, but I really love Old Allendale. Yeah. So it's it, it's uh, and I, I I like the way the city is growing. It's becoming more diverse. It's retaining its energy and uh, on and there are a lot of cities where that energy is a little harder to find, a little harder to come by, and it is not hard to find in our town. I feel like even though we're growing, we're still, we still have that small community feel, which is one of the things that I absolutely love about the city. I'm born and raised here and yeah. um, left for a little bit, went to school in Ottawa and came back. And it's such a great place to raise a family. We have everything that you could possibly need. And like the waterfront, everything is just all the festivals that happen, I'm so hoping that we get through all this COVID business soon enough so that we yeah. can get back to for sure having fun and wandering around and doing all that. Um, for any family that you that might be considering a move to Barry, what what would be your advice to them? Mm. You mean real estate advice? <laughs> 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 um, well, I mean, it's uh, I, I think. It is a, it's a, it is a tough time uh, in many ways because there's you know there's a shortage of sort of available supply and the and the uh, prices have gone up. I think what I would say right now is is by neighborhood of course because the neighborhoods um, you know even like look at the range of housing that is available mm -hmm. even the new housing that's coming in some of the new neighborhoods. So whether it's a townhouse. Um, low rise apartment uh, or single detached. There's some small lot single detached. So there's a real range of, of sort of first time buyer oriented product, I guess, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're, you're looking for the first time. But honestly, the advice I would give is to look for the gems in resales as well, because um, uh, there are some incredible older neighborhoods in Barrie that we all know. Yep. And I mean, you ask somebody from Barrie, what are the really great neighborhoods that you'd love to start a family in? And some of the answers you get probably aren't the most obvious to somebody coming to Barry from outside. Absolutely. So my number one bit of advice, drive the whole city and get out and walk some of it. Uh, and do not uh, ignore the historic neighborhoods because there are, um, you know, pockets. That's the other thing about the city oh, yeah. being the size that it is. We grew so fast from the 80s on. If you just take the city that existed before the 1980s, you know, there's sort of a dozen historic neighborhoods, but some of them are no more than four or five blocks. I think yeah. about the area north of Queens Park, which is a wonderful sort of historic pocket of the city. And uh, and you can find a really unique kind of lifestyle there. If you're if you're looking for a more standard suburban, 
uh, kind of um, opportunity. I think there's new neighborhoods uh, and more recently built neighborhoods that are that yeah. are obviously very safe and wonderful. Um, but you know, if you're looking for something a little bit different, uh, or maybe that established neighborhood character with more stuff that's walkable, look at the older neighborhoods. Love it. The East End, the old East End is my favorite. Part. East End is one of the first ones that comes to comes <laughs> yeah. to mind, right? I mean, we did yeah. we did something called the Historic Neighborhoods Project uh, when I first became a mayor, and and right. it looked at all the stuff just sort of around the core from yeah. Old Allendale around to sort of you'd call it the inner part of the old East End. But it didn't capture that part of the East End that a lot of people talk about, which is the sort of, you know, Napier, Vancouver, Puget, the grid from the 50s, uh, or sometimes interwar, uh, where all, there's a lot of really great bungalows on big lots and people are now improving them and in some cases building new homes. Um, but yeah, that's that's a neighborhood that a lot of people point to. And when we design the new neighborhoods, a lot of them are on a similar kind of grid. We tried to take the lessons of the old East End, like why people love that neighborhood and bring them yeah, into exactly. the design of the new neighborhoods. Yeah. Huh. I'm going to start paying attention to that as I'm driving around. <laughs> <laughs> um no that's awesome yeah it's a it's a great city i think for anybody that's looking for a move we've got so much to offer for sure um okay every time that i do these podcasts i do a rapid fire segment so all right speed round. <laughs> speed round don't overthink it whatever comes to mind first okay if you weren't mayor what career would you like to be in uh short stop for the jays really there 100 oh, percent I'm starting to accept I might not be able to do that. I might be aging out of that, but Never you know, know. I'll, I'll keep the dream alive. There you go. Do you, did you play baseball growing up then? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Um, what is your go-to spot for takeout? For takeout? Oh, yeah. funny one. Uh, probably not the first to jump to mind. Bamboo Thai, which is on King Street in the far yeah. south end. Oh, Amazing like Thai food. Yes. yes. Good call. Um, and once things get back to normal, whatever our new normal is, what is one thing that you're most looking forward to? Live music. So I'm in a band. We haven't played live in a year, uh, but I just miss live music. And uh, it's such a big part of this part of the world, central Ontario with Burles Creek and everything else. But it's such a big part of downtown Barrie and the waterfront, waterfront festivals. Cannot wait to hear amplified guitar coming off a big stage i know oh yeah. i that's even camping fast and that like, yeah oh, I well know. and they have, that may be i mean as things are lining up right now that might be the first the first big one uh we'll see whether we get to that point uh the city's looking at doing something in september if we're not able to do in july some of the things that we'd hope to do in july so we'll see it's still obviously up in the air as we sit here um early in the vaccination rollout but yeah. we'll hope yeah awesome what instrument do you play? Are you guitar? Drums, badly. Uh, okay, I was trying yeah. to. I'm the weird guy at the back behind <laughs> the drum kit, and I do a little backing vocals, which is even worse. That's awesome. Yeah. I I have seen you play before. I remember. Yeah, I mean, we we this is what I did for so most mayors have a golf tournament or a gala. I don't yeah. have one because I thought I might be stealing sponsors and donations away from other charities if I did that. Uh, and I have this great band. Uh, there's five other guys. We love, and we only do charity gigs. Well, we play now and again for some friends' birthdays and backyard wow. stuff. But we have played. Uh, we've been lucky enough to play at Casino Rama for a charity gig for RVH and a few other things. And we do that every year for the food bank and others. But just trying to raise money. That's awesome. How did that all come about then? Oh, uh, I was play. yeah. Well, I was in a band. I've been in a couple of bands in Barry prior to that. And there's one guy that's been consistent all the way through. He and I have. Been, been in a few bands or early iterations maybe of this one. Um, but this one's been together in its current form for about five years. And we go back almost 10 years, the, the four of us that started it. So we've been having a lot of fun. Not that we're getting much better, but you know, it's, we're loud. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters, right? Uh, it's, we're fine. I, I mean, I think we, we're crowd pleasers because we, we definitely bring the energy, if not the ability. That's awesome. Um, Usually I ask a signature question, which is what does being more than a realtor mean? But we're going to switch it up a little bit. And All right. what is your number one golden piece of advice? Or if you have a couple nuggets for people that are either wanting to get involved, um, you sort of touched on the different task force and everything that you have going on within the city. You've raised a whole bunch of issues that we have within the city. 
what would be your advice to anybody that's sort of sitting on the sidelines that would want to get involved or help? Yeah. You? Well, I mean, pick something that you're passionate about uh, and get involved uh, through either through, you know, an event or an organization. And, and I would say, you know, if it's housing, there's Redwood Park communities, there's the Busby Center, uh, if it's homelessness in particular, uh, there's the Salvation Army, there are uh, builds for, uh, through the Barry Construction Association uh, and others, uh, Habitat for Humanity. So if it's charitable work, uh, there's a lot of incredible organizations. And it, it's actually a great entry into sort of being involved in other things in the community because um, so much is done in partnership now. If it's healthcare, you know, through RVH, uh, through um, the family health team and some of their events, there are, are ways to, to, to get involved. Uh, the Food Bank, another great organization. Um, so, you know, volunteering or supporting projects in the charitable sector is always, always good and a good way to get involved. And then with the city ourselves, I mean, we've gradually grown the number of sort of uh, committees and, and, and stakeholder groups that help us try and get things accomplished. So the task forces are one example, uh, our anti-racism task force is another one, uh, our advisory committees on heritage, on uh, accessibility uh, are, are, are other good examples. So the, the important thing I think is to pick something that you're really passionate about because that's gonna drive your involvement and, and use that as your entry. Um, and whatever that is, maybe it's an environmental cause, um, maybe it is, uh, you know, something related to education and, and uh, education initiatives outreach in our community. Um, and, you know, I think that that is a good segue because it often in, it often kind of gets you a little bit into the municipal world and a little bit into community involvement. And you meet a lot of other people who are passionate about the same thing. And, yeah. and that's what, uh, what, what everybody's energy uh, builds on. That's awesome. Very, very good points. So thank you so much for joining me today on this i know you're a busy man and uh we definitely we appreciate it and we look forward to continuing our partnership with the city yeah well i wanted to say thank you to beat um to yourself and to everybody at the organization because you know you touched on it earlier you've been an amazing partner in the community and you know 2021 is turning out to be uh you know the the only year better than 2020 for 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 the real estate sector on the on the level of prices but i know there's a lot of challenges that go on right now in terms of trying to find listings and find supply and help people find homes in Barrie. so thank you for the work that uh, everybody does and and you know just because prices are up doesn't mean it's an easier time for the the sector so you know we do see this as a partnership we want to continue to grow the 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 supply to be clinical about it but together what we're doing here are creating places, great places for people to live and then you guys help them find them. So um, uh, we wanna keep doing that and, and thank you for the work that you do in the community. Sounds great. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to all the other episodes that we've recorded.